Welcome back to Two Brothers Comics. I'm Dustin. Today, I want to talk to you guys about Shadow Jones and why I think she is going to be important to the last Ronin storyline. If you want to hear what my thoughts are, hit the like button while the intro plays and stay tuned. Now, we've all been talking about the last Ronin for this last several months, um, probably for the better part of 2020, it was something everyone was excited about and talking about. And then when it came out, everybody once again, uh, that, that, that excitement resurged uh, because of how great it was. Now, there was a lot of questions uh, to a lot of things inside of the last run in issue number one. And I had one specifically. So let's start with the origin story. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. Casey Jones meets a woman by the name of Gabe or Gabriel in a diner. Now, she is four months pregnant. Once they start dating, they eventually become married and Casey Jones sticks around. Uh, he doesn't let that bother him. He loves Gabriel and he decides that he's going to stick around, which is very important because Gabe dies giving birth and... That, that, that really kind of leaves uh, this, this unborn child in the, in the hands of Casey Jones, who now becomes the legal guardian, the stepfather. Um, the stepfather of Shadow Jones, who is uh, a character that is, is, is what I'm talking about here. This is the character that I want to explain to you guys why I think she's going to have a big role in The Last Ronin. Now, after Gabe dies, Casey Jones brings Shadow home. He ends up taking her to New York City uh, so that he can get a little bit of help from his mom where he and April end up getting together and uh, they get married and now Shadow Jones is being raised by not only Casey Jones and April Jones but the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as well. Um, now, if you think about this, guys, let's talk about the last Ronin. In the last Ronin, we saw Michelangelo skating through the city. He's trying to just make his way in. And he steals that motorcycle, and then we see a group of kids. They look like a group of young adults, uh, probably in their mid-20s, late-20s. They come out, and one of the guys says, Jones, your bike has gotten stolen, or something to that effect. Um, but the big key here is he refers to her as Jones. Bold capital letters there, okay? So automatically, everyone thinks, okay, maybe this is a descendant of Casey Jones. Um, now, this character, Jones, later helps Michelangelo escape by sending the foot soldiers this way while Michelangelo goes this way and gets down into the sewer where she follows him and finds him down there right before he's about to... And the next thing we see is Michelangelo waking up in a hospital alongside April O'Neil. So, obviously, this character, this jones character here is gonna have something to do with this series going forward i really believe that she's gonna play a big part in this series um i, I don't think that that was just a a happy coincidence that she was there that that was whose motorcycle he decided to take uh that she followed him into the sewer after helping him uh get there while distracting the foot soldiers and sending them on a wild gooch chase. I don't think any of this was coincidental. I think this is all part of the plan. And I think this is actually Shadow Jones. Now, Shadow Jones first appeared in issue number 60 of the Mirage Studios Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles run. I have my copy right here. Uh, it's a really, really cool book. It's got a great cover on it. Uh, but this is actually the issue where she is brought home from the hospital and, and, and given a name in Casey Jones' apartment. Um, so this is going to be the first appearance issue there. Now, she does play different roles, like I said. Uh, one being in the Tales of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, in alternate continuity, Raphael actually becomes her sensei and takes her on as a pupil trains her in ninjutsu and later on she's actually looking for Raph because he's disappeared and she eventually would take down the entire foot elite now like i said this is in another dimension it's an alternate universe an alternate timeline uh, but i do believe i personally this is just me i do personally believe that this is who this jones character is in the last ronin because remember the last ronin 
takes place uh, back in that Mirage continuity in, in that timeline. Um, so we, we definitely want to keep that in mind. Um, that that is that is kind of the the mindset and and, and the timelines uh, where they're going to be pulling a lot of the stuff for the last Ronin. Uh, it's not going to have anything to do with the IDW run or any of the other runs uh, that have happened over the years. This was a concept that came out of 1987, so just keep that in mind. This is not a guarantee. This is not me telling you 100% that this is what it is, but. Just doing some research on my own and doing some digging and connecting some dots. Uh, this is what I've come up with and this is really what I think uh, is going to be. Uh, and I think that, that her first appearance being in issue number 60, uh, this really doesn't have any kind of key value. Uh, there's no, no speculation on it or anything. Uh, but it was just something really cool to dig and find and say, okay, this was where the first appearance was. Now I did find... When I was doing some researches, different sources were pointing to different books. Uh, I believe one said issue 58, uh, one said issue 57. Uh, there was one small, tiny, tiny uh, spot in 50, uh, 59 where uh, there was, it looked almost like a baby somewhere in there, but um, as far as I could find, digging through my issues and really, really looking and reading through the issues, this is where she's brought home from the hospital, given her name, and this is where Shadow Jones, the character, is born here. Uh, now, issue 58, which is where I saw some sources pointing, I saw nothing in there. Nothing in there um, where it showed a, uh, an appearance of this child uh, outside of Gabe being pregnant. I don't know if you want to count that as a first appearance. Uh, I'll leave that up to you guys, but as far as I can tell, uh, my best bet is, is the first appearance is here in issue 60, and um, if this character does end up being who I think it is in this last Ronin series, um, I think that could definitely do something for this character, and it's pretty cool. Uh, I've got that comic already. I'm not trying to throw speculation out, but it was, like I said, I just think that uh, after connecting some of these dots that... It was just something cool to find out and I wanted to share it with you guys. So let me know guys, drop a comment. Do you think that I'm right? Do you have any other kind of um, theories that you would like to share with us? I'm very interested to know what your thoughts are. Make sure if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. It helps us out a lot. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Regardless, we appreciate you guys so much and you are the best part of Two Brothers Comics. And as always, collect your way.